Hi, it's Tom, and in this video, what we're going to do is review the playing card class that we developed as part of our in-class activities in the previous classes. Our playing card class was used to represent a playing card. It had as attributes my rank, which was an integer, my suit, which was an integer, both of which were private to the class. It also had another attribute called isFaceUp, which was a Boolean. This property was public. The class had constructors, it had mutators, and it had accessors. So the two constructors for playing card actually were really one method, but um, there was a public constructor uh, that was default, meaning that it didn't take any parameters as well as a parameterized constructor which allowed us to initialize the rank, the suit, and whether or not the card was face up when the uh, playing card was first instantiated. The mutators allowed us to set the rank to an integer, set the suit to an integer, or flip the card. The accessors allowed us to find out what the rank was but rather than return it as an integer, it actually returned it as a string. Same thing with the suit. And then finally, there was a two string method, which converted the entire playing card to a readable string. So let's have a look at the code that we ended up with. Uh, we have our full set of includes for the various different things that we needed, and we're using our namespace standard. In the class declaration section, we declare all of our uh, public uh, um, attributes as well as uh, behaviors and if I scroll down I can see uh, the private attributes okay so the private attributes were two simple integers my rank and my suit my rank is a value between 1 and 13 and my suit is a value between uh, 1 and 4 so um, let's go through the public ones um, in terms of constructors which are used to initialize objects uh, we had our default, okay? Um, I've decided to use the uh, initialization list and inline this particular constructor. So the name of the uh, constructor function is always the same name as the class. Uh, because it's default, it has no parameters in this case. What it does is it initialized the my rank uh, attribute to one and the my suit attribute to one as well. So giving us the ace of hearts. And then what it does is it also initializes is face up to false. Okay, so by default, when we first create an object, we have the ace of hearts face down. The parameterized constructor allows us to specify the rank, suit, and face up property that we want. Uh, the face up property has a default argument of false in case all we want to do is initialize the rank and the suit. Let's scroll down and see what the parameterized constructor um, uh, is actually defined as doing. So in the class definition section, we can see the first uh, method that we define is our parameterized constructor. Okay, so it's a part of the playing card class. So that's playing card colon colon. It's called playing card. And these were the parameters, rank, suit, and face up. Um, so, for the rank and the suit, there's some validation involved. So, rather than including the validation here in the constructor, I've just passed these parameters to my two set functions. The first one to set the rank, and then the second one to set the suit. So, all the validation will happen in those two methods. The isFaceUp property is simply set to whatever the faceUp parameter is. Let's scroll back to the definition the declaration section, I should say. So next in my list here are my accessors. Okay, I have three of them. Uh, each one returns a string. There's get rank string, get suit string, and two string. Okay, each one of these is defined below. So let's scroll down to look at them. They're down at the bottom. All right, so get rank string basically works. It creates a an array of strings that has the various different card ranks in them. 
okay, uh, ace, two, three, four, five, all the way up to king. And then what it does is it returns the string at the position my rank minus one. So ace, for example, is at index zero in the array. However, uh, my rank one is what uh, corresponds to ace. So that's why there's a, a minus one involved. For the get suit uh, accessor, I do something very similar. I have a, uh, an array of strings with spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. Okay, and it returns the card suit at index my suit. Now I said earlier that it was actually uh, one to four, but in reality, it's uh, zero through three are the uh, individual uh, suit indexes. Um, so I'll have to correct that in my comments. Finally, the two string method uh, utilizes a string stream object. Um, I felt this was gonna be the easiest way to actually build the string. So if the card is face up, so I check the face up property, or face up attribute, I should say, uh, what it does is it builds using the string stream, uh, the name of the card by using the uh, get rank string method, followed by the string of, followed by the get suit string. Okay, so ace of hearts, for example. Otherwise, the card is face down. So all I want the string to say is face down. And then either way, I return the string string objects call to string, which returns the actual string that's stored in that string stream. Next, we'll have a look at the mutators. So up here in the class declaration section, I have three mutators. Okay, two of them are void, set rank, set rank, and set suit. Um, these two each take a, a parameter. One, the set rank takes a, a parameter called rank. Uh, set suit takes an integer called suit and uh, does some validation on these and actually sets the rank and the suit um, uh, private attributes. Boolean uh, flip card, what it does is it just simply uh, changes what the is face up property is. Okay, so it will make is face up equal to not is face up, essentially just reversing it. Okay, um, this uh, mutator also acts kind of like an accessor in a sense that it will return what the is face up property now is. Okay, so if the if it was a face down card before, this code changes it to face up and then returns true for face up. Let's scroll down and look at set rank and set suit in more detail. Okay, so here is the set rank method. Again, part of the playing card class takes an integer called rank and then internally does some validation. So locally I have minimum rank and maximum rank defined, one through 13. If the rank is less than the minimum rank, it's less than ace, or greater than the maximum rank, more than king, then what I want to do is I want to throw an out of range exception. Before I do that, I create a string using a string stream again. And I tell the user, well, actually it's not necessarily the user, but uh, wherever this is, uh, whatever catch block this is going to, will have access to the string. It's going to say rank argument, whatever the rank argument was, is out of range, and it must be between minimum rank and maximum rank. I could have hard coded that to be one in 13, but there's a, a method to my madness. We're gonna modify this in a later program uh, and it's gonna be convenient to have that as uh, the named constants there. So again, if it's out of range, ultimately it's gonna throw an out of range exception and the what string for that exception will be the string that I just built. Now, if it's not out of range, okay, I have an else. Now, technically I don't need this else because this uh, throw would have jumped out of the function, but I've kept it in there to keep things nice and neat. Okay, so if it gets to this else, that means that the rank parameter was valid, so that's what I set my rank to. The set suit method works exactly the same way. The minimum suit is zero for spades, the maximum suit is three for clubs. Um, if the suit parameter is out of range, I build a string and throw an out of range exception using that string as the what string. Otherwise, the suit parameter is valid, and that's what I set my suit to. 
So that's the class uh, declaration and implementation sections. Um, we've coded a, a short main to actually test this stuff out. Okay, so in main, um, in a try block, I try to create a couple of card objects. In this case, I create a card object called card object, and I create a second one called blackjack. Card object, I don't specify any parameters, so what I get is the default, face down uh, ace of hearts, I believe it was. Uh, for blackjack, well, I actually specify the various parameters. Um, so I'm specifying the rank, 11, which is a jack, 0, okay, which I believe is spades, if uh, memory serves, and I want it to be face up. Okay, so to see if that actually works, um, I just output the two cards using my two string method. Okay, card object is, blackjack is, and then I'm going to pause the program. So let's try just that part out. So I can see here, as initialized, card object is face down, that makes sense, and blackjack is jack of spades, so that makes sense as well. I'm going to close this off and we'll continue with main. comment out that system pause perhaps. So if the card object is face down, so I've used not card object dot is face up, okay, then I want to flip the card. Okay, card object dot flip card. So I'm utilizing here the is face up um, attribute, the public attribute, as well as the flip card method. Um, for blackjack, I'm not bothering putting it in a uh, an if uh, statement here. I'm just simply saying I want to flip the uh, blackjack. Okay, so blackjack was face up to begin with, so it should now be face down. So after flipping, we'll see what those two things do. So we can see now the uh, uh, card object was ace of hearts. Uh, blackjack has been flipped over, so now it says face down. Next, I want to see if my two uh, set, uh, set rank and set suit uh, mutators actually work. So I'm going to take the original card object and I'm going to set the rank to 12, which will be a queen. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blackjack and I'm going to set the suit to 3, which is clubs, and then output them again. Um, this time I'm not outputting the entire card, but rather I'm going to test my two gets. Uh, I'm going to uh, output the rank of the card object, so get rank string, and I'm going to output the suit of uh, the blackjack card. So we'll have a look at, uh, at that. OK, so after setting, uh, card object rank is now queen, and blackjack suit is now clubs. If anything went wrong in there, uh, it would have been caught by our uh, catch block, where I'm catching a standard exception. And I'm displaying what? So I'm going to just simulate this actually happening by changing in my main um, the uh, card object rank from, say, 12 to... Actually, I'll do it right in the uh, constructor, so it happens right off the bat. I'm going to change uh, blackjack from 11 to 22, which there is no rank 22, so we'll, we'll see if that actually works. So we can see it throws right down to the catch and it shows me that what string? 22 is out of range, rank must between, be between 1 and 13. Now of course I would have to do a lot more testing uh, to make sure that everything actually is working, but that gives a quick overview of the playing card class that we developed in class uh, last week. Thank you very much.